Um, this is a really cool plant. So, uh, found it over by the river, uh, got some of its seeds whenever it was growing. Here's the dry seed pods. Uh, so this is castor bean plant, used for castor oil. Uh, it's poisonous, unfortunately, but can be used uh, if processed correctly. Um, it's got uh, ricin in it, I believe. Um, I like its leaf uh, because it's broad kind of shade. That kind of does. It's got also this purple stalk. You know, this thing grows huge. So this is basically, I planted it and I was kind of thinking it was a uh, uh, okra because I got all my seeds mixed up in my tray and uh, ended up actually being the castor plant. Uh, it's got similar to a lot bigger, but it's actually a castor tree. So this guy um, was able to, where's the ice cream man? Um, so this thing is huge. This thing is about 15 feet tall and it grew about that high just in um, about three months. So it's maybe gone its fourth or fifth month. I can cut it down if I want to. I got plenty of them growing up too that I can kind of do. But this, so in reference to some of y'all about shade, these are, uh, you want to think about quick plants. So sunflowers have helped us out in the past with shade. This castor bean plant, you know, you can get the seeds out in the wild. You can find some of them at the store, but, you know, it's really easy to find. Um, so I encourage trying to grow that. So uh, start it, you know, in this point in the season so that by the time it gets really hot, it's already up working on some shade. So I got a bunch of things that were down here. So this is uh, spinach. Again, let it go to seed. Has the potential to drop some of its seed. Um, cabbages. Um, sorry, that was a uh, more um, um, broccoli there. Or I think those are actually kales or collard greens. Um, collard greens are really good ones to grow. You know, growing a plant where you're growing the leaf is going to be the easiest uh, plant to grow. You don't have to worry about it producing the flower or the fruit or any of that and basically what happens is a lot of plants if they're annuals they'll grow up produce the flower uh, the flower gets pollinated and then the fruit or the edible feature will come out after that um, you know but if you're growing it for the leaf you can start eating it pretty quickly after there's some old fennel it's doing well um, up on some of these trellises we got tomatoes So out here you can kind of see again more uh, lettuces that just kind of grew in the sidewalk area that I made. So I'm going to be hitting up some salads. Um, these are bulb, bulb onions. So they're kind of good to get. This is a uh, grafted um, plum that's going to be growing up in here. Little guy. See? Just a stick. But there it is growing in okay. Um, here's celery. You know, again, just threw out some seeds, so we got some more lettuce over here. Um, we got some more of these kinds of bugs here, you know, but um, basically you can kind of just chop and drop a lot. You know, if the, if the leaf has gotten too deteriorated, you can do that, but also. You know, so you can check where the leaf is, check for the bug, uh, look online, you know, see what its predators are. But those guys will mess it up. Oh, here's the other one. That. So those little worms, B BP, I believe, which is a bacteria, can be used to kill some of these uh, worms there. Um, and that's a natural um, pest control there. But mainly it's going to be these snails, so... Um, Zach, I think, posted a good thing about snails on there. Capturing it with a uh, beer, just leaving a container out and let them kind of fall into the liquid container. Um, but you can also eat these too. There's nothing harmed about this plant. You know, they're eating it, we can eat it. Um, or you can leave it down as a chop and drop. Um, more sunflowers coming in, onions, tomatillos, tomatoes. 
Um, we're going into another kind of native bed over here. So this area is actually, this is gonna be uh, part shade to almost full shade. So really difficult uh, to kind of keep it going in this area, but there's still a lot of plants to do. So we've got some ground cover, silver pony foot, not really edible but nice ground cover. I like it coming over these edges. Uh, here's a, a sorrel also, got that oxalic acid in it. Um, beans, thyme, uh, sage, um, these flowers all back in here. This is a really, really good um, plant for the shade that has flowers. It's really hard sometimes for flowers to form in the shade, but uh, this is the shrimp plant. So it kind of gets a little wild, but again, you know, um, some of these things you can chop and drop and you really want to just be building up organic matter throughout the year in your garden beds. Um, that's what's happening out in nature. So, um, so we got that kind of as the lower, um, shrub and we got our plum tree right here. Those can kind of work in some of the shade. Uh, there so we got it kind of arched out and also this is just a shade line right here so I'm right on that fringe you know um, my nitrogen fixer local one would be the mountain laurel on this one another dynamic accumulator or kind of a uh, heavy material kind of producer is comfrey um, comfrey is medicinal too, used for burns or small cuts. Uh, so I, I use comfrey and the lantana a lot whenever I get wounds. Um, so they've really kind of helped uh, with the healing process there. Um, you know, I cut my, my arm with a circular saw and I just put some comfrey and some of that on there and that kind of helped. Pretty, pretty brutal. I uh, got some elephant ears over here. Those are going to be really nice. Um, so, you know, whenever I first started, I wanted everything to be edible, and I didn't really care about a lot of plants if they weren't edible, but um, you really quickly learn that a lot of, uh, you want multiple functions out of a lot of the plants. So not only just kind of enjoyment, but um, really, really kind of increases some of that. Um, here's actually a really good example to show you what that nitrogen fixing is. So this is a clover. Clover right here. So let's get down in here. Get this clover root. Clover is a ground cover nitrogen fixer. You can sometimes buy seeds for that. And what I want to show you is um, basically right there there's one of them so that little nodule right there at the end of my fingertip that's on this clover that's a little uh, nitrogen kind of storage unit right there so having having clover having nitrogen fixers around in your guild really kind of helps um, while you're out here even just working you know you're always kind of uh, wanting to uh, weeds and stuff like that so eventually you'll get to a stage where just being in the garden will be some of the work that will be happening in the garden and that line of work and uh, stuff will get blurred um, so this is a copper canyon daisy um, I got it close by my walkway because every time you brush it it kind of really releases a strong fragrance um, so I really like it for that um, also in the shade we got a variegated ginger. I don't think this is really an edible ginger, but it's a, you know, a landscape kind of looking plant, good looking plant. Um, over here we got another native bed on the edge. So we have um, Diatura. I, I forget kind of which ones that one is. Um, skull cap, small pink skull cap. Oh, look, we got more. See, just growing up in here, we got more of that wood sorrel. So I'm going to keep that, eat that. Um, we have some more pollinators out here. Um, 
So here you can even see this wasp. Wasp, you know, can actually help with uh, getting rid of some pest too. There it can be a pollinator. Flies can be a pollinator. Butterflies will be pollinators. And I'm trying to look. They were out here eating before. But some of the caterpillars um, have been out on this butterfly uh, plant chomping down on stuff. Um, you can see they've been kind of eating a lot of that material there. I don't really see the caterpillars anymore. So there was a bunch of them, uh, at least several caterpillars per every kind of uh, root on there, but they might have gone into their cocoon phase after eating. And I'll actually show you that in a little bit. Um, so out here as the last little guild, we got a uh, um, Texas sage that works really well native. Um, we have, uh, oh gosh, uh, yucca over here, pink yucca. Uh, we have a pear, fan still pear growing. And then we have our nitrogen fixer, which is our red bud. So. Close by every tree I want to try to put, or group of trees, I want to try to put a nitrogen fixer on. These red buds are edible. Um, I think more so tastes better in this bud-like form before the flower opens. You can also eat the flower. Um, but it's a really beautiful plant in t this time of year. So I kind of saw this later, earlier here. This is a little cocoon for a monarch. It's pretty crazy. Look at that little gold that's on there. Yeah, so they'll hold on pretty tightly. We'll flip that around to keep it away from predators so that that monarch can kind of come on out here. <laughs> 